Goodman. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. And I guess first and foremost, I want to uh, mention for those of you who watched my last video on canning up cranberry juice, I did seven uh, quart jars and they all sealed. And that's what they look like. Uh, the beautiful golden or beautiful red color is developing. The sugar has all um, dissolved, but I have an issue in that I have an air pocket there at the top that I'm not happy with. It, it doesn't do any harm, except that that space would be much nicer if it was filled. And I realized what the issue here was. Cranberries have a ton of air. So uh, when you cold pack, which is what, what I did, uh, the air in the um, cranberries releases into the jar, obviously, and uh, you end up with that air pocket. So for anyone who is planning to make their own cranberry juice, I highly recommend doing a, a hot pack. And, and just to do a hot pack, I would suggest that you don't even need to um, get too fancy with it. Just put a pot of water on the stove, uh, boil them until they uh, split or crack, and that would probably be about five minutes or so. You don't want to leave it too long. Cranberries have a tremendous amount of pectin, and you don't want this to set. So uh, my thought is the next time around that I do this, and I do plan to do it, I think it's a, an awesome idea, um, is just to uh, have a, a set amount of water and then also have another pot of water on the stove boiling so that if I need to top up the jars, you know, I'd scoop out the cranberries as they've uh, split and, and uh, uh, split and uh, cooked just a little bit and I would still try to get an even amount in every jar. So I'm still looking at probably seven jars and five bags of cranberries and split them evenly amongst the jars. It may not look as full because there won't be as much air, but there'll still be the same quantity of cranberries. You will be getting more liquid in this is all. And you want to leave one inch headspace. I'm glad I didn't leave a huge amount of headspace because it would have been even worse and as I said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, except I don't like the way it looks. <laughs> so in future, I will hot pack cranberry juice. I believe some people said that they do this with grapes as well, and they make grape juice. But grapes don't have, they don't float. They don't have that much air in them. So, and, as you, and, as, and if you know anything about cranberries, the way they're harvested is that they flood the ground so that the cranberries float and they're easy to harvest. So yes, there's a huge amount of air in this and that is what created this air pocket here. Anyway, I'm going to wait um, four to six weeks before I open this one up, but just after Christmas, if the cranberries go on sale, I'll be making another batch. I'll just be hot packing it. Okay, so that's number one on my agenda. Um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to discuss was that uh, it seems to me that a little bit of a different Christmas season this year than normal. Uh, I'm finding that people just are not getting into the Christmas spirit, that there's still a tremendous amount of negativity around, and I find that really sad. And I think that personally, I have to work to rise above the negativity and don't let it affect me, don't let it bother me, because I'm seeing it. I'm seeing that, okay, <clears throat> you're hearing about one shooting over there and six people died and some stabbings on the subway system and <laughs> strangers just attacking people. And I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm sure this stuff happens all the time, but it seems to be on the increase. And I do understand that for some people, Christmas is not a joyous time. There are some people that are really hurting and are really alone this time of year. Um, so it's, uh, 
important to, as I say, rise above the, the negativity and be cheerful and try to make those around you happy as well. So that is one of my goals. See what you can do to uh, make Christmas a good time for somebody who's having a hard time. And it just seems as though families have so many differences of opinions these days, so many differences of outlooks that there's such a division that has been created in the last few years that some people are having a lot of difficulty getting past that and back into spending time with each other, spending time with family, enjoying each other's company. And even though it's Christmas, it doesn't seem to have alleviated that. So uh, I have to wonder what exactly is going on. And uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of a lot of issues. And, and personally, I'm tired of it. <laughs> I want to be happy. I want to see people around me happy. I've always noticed that people gravitate to people that are cheerful and happy, even though fear-mongering has its pull. So right now, I'm still focusing on trying to make the Christmas season a good one, to hopefully spend time with my children and grandchildren, and Hopefully it's going to be a happy occasion. I mean, they've all got their own lives. Uh, it's not as though any of them need me or depend on me. They're all quite strong and independent and uh, doing okay. So I'm not terribly worried about any of them in that particular uh, area. And so once the Christmas season passes, of course, my uh, push is to continue to um, prep a lot because I think that the coming year is going to be a difficult one. Okay, getting back to <laughs> the past weather warning that we had. We had this huge, oh we're going to have this great big huge weather um, event and well it never happened. It, uh, I'm sure it happened down south but not here. Uh, uh, it was no different than any minor winter weather event that we get, although they're threatening again for just before Christmas and I really hate driving in the snow, so, and I really hate Christmas snow of all times. Um, you don't want to have to worry about being able to get from point A to point B because of weather conditions, so I'm hoping that it's not as bad as what they say or that it will be cleared up before Christmas comes. Mark had his uh, friend from Mississippi <laughs> give us a shout and uh, we they're doing well. Uh, the uh, wife has got 40 chickens now. This is uh, when I was down uh, south and we were visiting them. She was getting her first little batch of chickens and had someone build her a uh, a hen house and uh, I think she had like five or six of them there she didn't have too many apparently she's up to 40 and they had their first hen that was laying and I'm like that's awesome um, I don't know what they're going to do with that many eggs mind you there's a, a fairly substantial group in that home so I mean children and grandchildren and you know it's a, it's a big family unit so perhaps they'll make use of all those eggs but yeah, 40 chickens can certainly make a lot of eggs. And I was told that they're hoping for snow. You know, they they expect a weather event there and they're hoping for snow. <laughs> and Mark told them that, uh, you know, he said that, oh, the children would love to have snow for Christmas. And uh, Mark told him that if he never sees another snowflake again, it can't happen too soon. So, uh, yeah, quite a, I guess it depends on what you're used to. And uh, we're, we are, we have more than enough snow here and it lasts far too long. At least down south they can uh, get a nice snowfall, they can enjoy it for a day or two and then it's gone. No real worries about shoveling it. 
Anyway, hope everyone's had a great weekend, are doing well, and you're getting ready for Christmas, and that none of it is a panic, and none of it is a rush, and uh, anyway, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Hope you enjoyed my little update here, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.